John Carlin was my big brother, and sadly he passed away this week after a long battle with ALS. Um, I've been trying to to just remember all the good times we had, and, and God, we had we had so many. Uh, I'm just so blessed to have. Uh, but I wanted to share something. Uh, one for uh, some of John's friends who miss his sense of humor and, and will probably get a kick out of this, but. Um, also, just for, for those of you who may have a friend, family member who can't get out there and do things um, or is suffering from some type of disease or ailment, um, just to remind you that, um, that there's activities you can do still with them. There's memories you can still make. Uh, we came up, I came up when I would visit John in Los Angeles uh, right after COVID hit. Um, a lot of his friends didn't want to come and visit him because they were concerned they could give John COVID, rightfully so. And so he was feeling alone and um, just sad, down, because uh, he was going through this disease as well. And he, he just couldn't get around like he used to. So we tried to come up with something fun. And I said, John, you know, we're going to do something. We're going we're gonna to make some silly video series. And I gave him a variety of options. But... John has uh, a bunch of art that he has collected throughout the years. So the one he responded to was for me to act as the brother who hates art. And he would, we would go through all of his art and pictures and, uh, and he would try to convince me that art really was cool. And it was a lot of fun just because John and I were working pretty much unscripted. We were just trying to make each other laugh and maybe uh, say something shocking to, to make our mother cringe uh, because we just pretty much just shared this with some, some friends and family. Uh, but I wanted to, to share it because uh, last week John wanted to do a new episode of Art Hour and, um, and we were excited to do that and he was looking forward to it and, uh, and we just weren't able to get to it. But uh, this is uh, something close to both our hearts and something we had a lot of fun with. Um, it's called The Art Hour and this is the greatest hits. Hey, it's Chris. If you're anything like me, you completely despise art as a whole. I think I would rather have Joe Exotic just splash cologne all over me and throw me in a tiger pit than spend so much as an hour at an art gallery. But unluckily for me, my disdain for art uh, does not run in the family. In fact, my brother John uh, really has an affinity for art. So on this episode of Art Hour with Chris, we're going to take a look at some of his art and have him try to convince me why it doesn't totally and completely suck. Let's see. What creepy garage sale did you find this at? Actually, it was a thrift store, but huh. uh, thanks for the compliment. You're welcome. Um, it's very realistic, and I, I found it. Even the woods like uh, predates the picture. Obviously. Um, yeah, and if you look at the wave, you can see the uh, light coming through the wave, and it's a very spiritualistic setting. I don't know what ocean we're at, but I'm assuming it's the Pacific, and I even got the autograph of the artist who's very famous and lives in Sonoma. D I doubt it. Who wants to go sailing? Not me. Well, this is a nice picture up in uh, the Washington area. There's a lot of islands up there, and this is actually the backyard of a house. But Does that he, guy have the COVID? He uh, could have the COVID, and he's just kind of like sitting out there looking at his boat, kind of wondering if he should go in or not. Kind of like me in this video. Ouch. The Simpsons. You do that nicely, Chris. Thanks. Anyway, this is a family portrait of the Simpsons done by the creator, Matt Groening. I think that it really um, just kind of... Uh, just ties in everything all together. Maggie doesn't even look at the camera just like a real kid. Yeah, and she also has a red pacifier that ties it nicely with the frame. Ay, caramba. Now, I have to be totally honest with you, John. I hate this piece. I actually love it because it's a collectible, and it was done by Golden Apples. I don't know much about the people, but they're really kind of weird. Yeah, Avi. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, I don't even know if, how to explain it. Do I they know about social distancing? Obviously uh, no, not. Well, this is before COVID-19, obviously. Hmm. And uh, if you just notice that there's a lot of people that are all over the street, and um, they're just weird. There's a very zany kind of, I don't even know how to describe it. Looks like a bad, bunch of bad Funkos. That's a great call, Chris. I bet you're totally right. And that's really where Funkos got their origin, probably. Take me out to the ball game. This is a legendary picture from way back, probably around 1956, when Bill Veck, the legendary owner of the 
Cleveland Browns. It was actually a baseball team back then. Sent in uh, left. Where's the dog the, pound? Uh, the, yeah, I, I think they're behind the gates. Oh. Who let the dogs out? Anyway, um, it's a really that's the actual picture, and so you can see there's um, the three foot six um, Eddie Goodell who went up to the plate as a uh, kind of a promotional. He has kind of like a stance like Joe DiMaggio. Well, he looks like he's eighty eight years old. Yeah, he's older, but he's uh, a, kind of scrappy. Scrappy. Yeah, that's a good way to describe him. Anyway, he walked four pitches straight. The strike zone was only about an inch and a half, and uh, you could see... Baseball history. Really history. This is the worst best picture ever. It's got a tiger being swallowed by a fish, naked lady with a gun to her head, an ant coming out of a floating pomegranate. What is this? It's kind of all you said, Chris. It's called the uh, the dream of the bumblebee. And it's more like a nightmare. It's a Salvador Dali uh, piece, which um, he's a famous surrealist artist. Um, I surreally don't like it. Uh, I think it's kind of cool because carps, I mean, how many tigers, two tigers coming out of one carp's mouth? I mean, that's kind of cool. And they're both coming out of a pomegranate. There's ants running around, like you said. There's a naked lady with a gun pointed to her head. I hope she doesn't get hurt. And the best thing is the elephant walking on stilts in the background. Classic. <laughs> well, that's all it for this episode because, quite frankly, that's all I can take. And I wish I could tell you that this will be our final episode, but... Unfortunately, my brother has a lot more art, so. All right, John, here we go again. What am I looking at? This is a Salvador Dali piece um, titled Alice in Wonderland. Wonderland? Wonderland. It's oh. um, kind of from the uh, fairy tale Alice in Wonderland. There's a worm and butterflies. I don't remember Alice's arm getting chopped off and stuck out a window. Yeah, it's probably from the house that she climbed into. Anyway, the stairway hmm. right up there, butterflies. And there you see at the very bottom um, the signature of the great Salvador Dali. What in the actual hell? Again, Salvador Dali, he continues to impress and he brings it. Um, he's kind of an abstract artist. and just Kind of. Yeah, just a little abstract, but this is a juggler. and um, The juggling. dog doesn't seem that interested in the, the man's junk covered in a... a what is that? Um, don't know or don't care to investigate. But anyway, the dog should be concerned because if he doesn't uh, continue to juggle all those things, they'll land on his fur. That would be rough. Well, this isn't a painting. It is actually a painting. It's a lithograph of a painting. Um, not a painting. Well, it's, it's a, a lithograph. No, it's not a photo. It looks like a photo because of the wet sand and the reflection of the surfer uh, in it. I used to uh, live in Huntington Beach. I used to have a surf company. So this hung above my office when I was working. Oh, you had stubbies in O'Neill? No, I had ripped it up, but um, anyway, this was a surfer, and it kind of depicted the whole lifestyle that I was trying to... Well, rip it up really went big, didn't it? Huge. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I'm talking about. Look what I found, hidden away. John Carlin, rock it out. Where's this? This is Mazelon, but where did you find this picture? Ah, look at this. I trimmed it up so you don't have to see that nerd in there. That's a uh, spring break picture from 1984. And I love how they still have the glass on the beach. Just throw it anywhere. It's Mazatlan. Sticking with the island theme, we have this. Well, I don't even care anymore. What is it? It's called Magic Island. It's actually from Hawaii. Um, notice the brush strokes of the ocean and how many clouds, too, are in the sky of the island. It's in actually Oahu. And it's a, uh, it's really called Magic Island. I wonder if the people that were marooned here would consider it magic. Look, there's some of them now. Well, it's a wonderful island and it's a great picture. And uh, Unless you were marooned there. And I love it. The last piece, yay! Uh, this is a reproduction of a Chagall. Uh, Chagall was, Mark Chagall was a very famous Russian Jewish painter. And living in Los Angeles and having many Jewish friends, I thought it would be nice, since art is cultural, to have a Jewish artist and a very famous one at that, a Chagall hanging in my uh, bedroom. Reminds me of a book I just read my kids, Where the Wild Things Are, except with lesbians. Well, that'll do it for another boring edition of Art Hour with Chris. Uh, I've taken the liberty, however, to uh, get all of John's artwork that was featured in this show ready to ship. Uh, you can bid at the eBay link right here. Uh, please bid fast. Uh, because I'm not sure how long it's going to take before he realizes that I'm doing this. Chris, what are you doing? Get the heck John, out of here. nothing. Nothing to see. When do you go back to San Diego? Go. Get out of here. Now. The art. It's like a painting bomb blew up in here. And, I mean, who puts ten pictures on one freaking wall? I do. It's my beach wall. Well, son of a beach, we've got art hour number three coming up right now. 
I'm his brother. I hate art, but I love this guy. It should be fun. And I love art and hate my brother. Hmm. Let's get going. Art comes in all forms and sizes. This is actually a bronze statue of the famous Duke Kamanamoka uh, from the 50s, a famous surfer in Hawaii. That's not a real name. Yeah, it's a real name. It actually has three middle names that I don't feel like pronouncing right now. I bet the middle names have a crap ton of vowels in them. Don't be such a howly. And, oh wait, this I is- I had him surfing for you a little bit. What do you think about this? Well, that's hilarious from Surf's Magic on. Island, a previous uh, picture that I had. Magic Island's kind of growing on me. What the crap is this? Well, it's not a crayon drawing. It's actually a Picasso, one of the most famous artists ever lived. And this is actually a bullfight. Um, I think you're screwing with me. I think you took my son to Chili's, turned over the menu, had him doodle on it. That is clearly crayon. And then framed it and you're trying to screw with me. No, 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 it's Picasso. It's a legendary It looks like a James the, William Carlin. No, it's Picasso from the 50s. What's with the blood going on here? That's the bulls after they die from the stab wounds of the, of the um, you know, that swords. guy could have been a matador. Maybe the bull, they both took each other out. Tragedy. Very tragic. Tragedy in all art forms. No, well, this artwork is definitely a tragedy. I'm not sure all this constitutes his art. It is. It's a picture, actually, of Kermit the Frog, who autographed it to me with his little paws. I don't know how he gets his little hands around the pen. Well, he does a pretty good job, and he's just an entertainment master. Not one a one. bad autograph. Yeah, I just had it authenticated by Upper Deck, so it's authentic. Liar! We don't authenticate fictional animals, but there's something beyond his eyes. Yeah, he's um, definitely looking at you, Chris. You don't have a lot of friends like this. I do. Look, <laughs> I'm friends with all the Sesame Street crews and also all the Muppets and Sesame Street characters. Hmm, this reminds me of my favorite bagel. Sesame. Hey, I remember this one. This was hanging at Grandma's house when we uh, used to go pee. Yeah, I stole it from her. Um, no, you did not steal it from yeah, my I grandma. Did. I took it. <laughs> I guess ever. she's going to find out now that I have it. <laughs> I always wondered what it said. Le cousis fratique. What do you think that means? That means piss off. <laughs> now this is one ugly freaking baby. Um, actually, that baby is you, Chris. I was going to give it to you for Christmas. No, it's not. Oh, it really is. You did not have I was not a ginger. You were a ginger when you were little. God and then damn it, you. I hate you for it saying this. certainly became blonde Last later. Year. But that is Chris as a kid. I want <laughs> That's to say not. Chris Carlin at 12 months every Stop. Day. Maybe I went about this whole art show in the wrong way. Maybe there's more to art. Maybe I'm getting the impression that impressionists aren't so bad after all. And what am I going to have for dinner tonight? You know, it took me about three episodes, so almost three hours, but way shorter because I hate art, to realize that maybe art's not so bad. Maybe there are some redeeming qualities to art. So since my birthday is coming up in a few days, and since John typically doesn't give the best gifts, I decided to take a couple of my own. Island too. <laughs> Chris, bring back my art. Where are you going? Easels up.